Well, now you have to put up with my thick Dominican accent. <laughs> I apologize for that. And uh, <laughs> uh, well, I haven't been to Naples, uh, Italy, but I have been to Naples, Arkansas. <laughs> I'm going to be reading a couple of fragments from my, uh, I've, I've just finished this book, Los Rituales de la Bella Pagana, Rituals of the Pagan Beauty. Uh, it's, a, it's a book collage. It has uh, legends, uh, myths, poems, uh, koans. Uh, it's a poetic prose. It's uh, in verse also. And uh, there are also dialogues. Uh, the subtitle of the book is Dialogues of Love. There are like six dialogues uh, between uh, a, a philosopher and the pagan beauty, whose name is Angelica, and a poet, a painter. So the main characters are the, the Angelica, and the philosopher, the painter, and uh, the poet. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be reading the introduction, the prologue, and then my friends, uh, my friends are uh, Bob and Gretchen are going to be uh, doing the dialogue with me. I would like to read uh, first the prologue in Spanish and then in English, so you have the taste of the Spanish language. So tonight, besides enjoying the English language, we're going to be enjoying Spanish and Portuguese. <laughs> so, Rituales de la Bella Pagana, Rituals of the Pagan Beauty. Todos los que han vivido en la vasta pradera de sol y silencio habrán oído hablar de una bella pagana de nombre Angélica. Mitad mujer, mitad ilusión, no hay bar que su risa sonora no haya llenado, no hay corazón que sus palabras no hayan habitado, no hay ojos que no hayan sido deslumbrados por su dulce piel leonada, ni manos que no hayan deseado, bajo la luna de otoño, leer su cuerpo desnudo como un salmo en la misa del domingo. Semejante a la noche y al día, Angélica era de una belleza que duele como una perdida felicidad, porque había que ser muy insensible para verla desnuda y no sufrir el deseo de amarla hasta el cansancio de la madrugada. Había que ser muy insensible para no padecer su belleza como un hechizo y después lamentar durante las sucesivas lunas su ausencia y desatino. Angélica era hermosa como el crepúsculo malva en Nueva Orleans, clara como el cielo de Colorado en verano y quieta como las tibias estrellas del Caribe. Tenía apenas tres veces siete años y una sonrisa de dientecitos de leche que desarmaba al hombre más fiero. Su voz no había alcanzado aún la estatura de su edad y el oro de sus cabellos resplandecía en la penumbra del bar. Porque hay que saber que la bella pagana era de una dulzura y resiedumbre tal que no hubo en toda la vasta pradera hombre que pudiera mirarla de frente sin que comenzaran los ojos a llenárseles de una vaga melancolía. Y esta es la historia de la bella pagana, a la que muchos juraron amar y extraviados intentaron olvidar embotando sus sentidos frente al vino tibio de la larga noche esteparia. And uh, my friend Michael Abeita uh, and colleague translated the fragment into English. Thank you, Michael. It was a very nice uh, translation. I'm very happy with it. Those who have lived in the vast prairie of song and silence will have heard of a pagan beauty named Angelica. Half woman, half dream, there's no bar that doesn't resonate with her laugh, no heart that her words have not occupied, no eyes that have not been dazzled by her sweet copper skin, nor hands that have not desired to read her naked body under the autumn moon like a psalm during Sunday mass. Like night and day, Angelica was of a beauty that wounds like a happiness lost, because one would have to be numb to see her nude and not suffer the desire to melt lock to her until exhausted by the dawn. One, one would have to be numb not to feel the spell of her beauty and lament during the following moons her absence and her whims. Angelica was lovely like the moth twi twilight of New Orleans, bright like the summer skies of Colorado, calm like the warm stars of the Caribbean, 
She had but three times seven years, and her smile was of tiny, pearly white teeth that disarmed the wildest of men. Her voice had not reached the stature of her years, and her golden locks twinkled in the dark fringes of the bar. For one must know that the pagan beauty was so sweet and so tough that nowhere in the vast prairie was there a man who could look her eyes, look her in the eyes without his eyes swelling up with a vague melancholy. This is the story of the pagan beauty, who many vowed to love and drifting tried to forget, dulling her senses over the warm wine of the long prairie night. Thank you. And now we're having the dialogue. Uh, we're going to start with the narrator. They say that one day the pagan beauty and the poet came upon a quiet meadow, and here is what they said to each other. You who call yourself a poet, who is intoxicated with wine and passion, you claim to love me, but tell me, why do you love me? Oh, pagan beauty. <laughs> More beauty. <laughs> more beautiful than all that is good, truer than all that is beautiful, as Ibn Hazim might have said, my will to love you has neither rhyme nor reason. You can stop being beautiful. You can stop being good. You can even stop being pleasant, and I will never stop loving you. Well then, can you tell me what exactly love is? Oh, pagan beauty. <laughs> love is a sweet spell of happiness, the silent mist in which we are reborn in each moment. And how can love be so sweet if it hurts so much? Because it is a luminous wound from which time springs forth transformed into words. And how can you love me if you don't even know me? Love is knowledge. I know you because I love you. I know your skin. I know your kiss, your caress. As with wine or poetry, in you I have found my truth. And why have you given me so much, receiving so little? Because, oh pagan beauty, in this way I can be thankful for all of our gifts. My words, your music, my eyes, your hands, so that our lips can seek each other out in the dark corners, the streets, and in the bars. And the afternoon began to fade slowly, and the words of love turned into calm desperation. The pagan beauty vanished in the mist, and in the smell of tobacco, <laughs> and in the sweet, sorrowful words of the poet. All should know the agony of sleepless nights, when the desire, the desire to sleep, when the last bit of sky faded to night, and the poet found himself so alone, so vulnerable, and so human, in his pain stripped of his frivolousness, thinking of the 40 days and 40 nights that ever did he spend with the beautiful stranger in the Palace of Mirrors. The story is also fragile like love, and it should fall and break into five shattered notes of glass. Then excuse me, and if it should fall and break into five shattered notes of glass, then it is the clearest sign that a pack of night animals scurried about among the memories, the mirrors, and the dreams. <laughs>